Okay, let's look at this cash flow problem. Um, I have the inputs up here. Some of the terminology you'll see is slightly different, but that's fine. Uh, we'll work our way through that. All right, so I want to know the total cash flow from the three different components, cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing, cash flow from financing. First, I'm going to look at the total cash flow. Let me put that over here in the, t in the corner. Total cash flow is equal to... We had 39,900, and look at the years here in 2013, and in 2012 we had 24,000. So the difference there is 15,900. So I have positive cash flow of 15,900. Now let's go through, see if we can figure out where that came from. So let's start with cash flow from operations. To do that, I start with my net income. I think it's best to write out the individual components here. Uh, then I need to add my depreciation. I'll put the numbers in, in just a second. I need my change, so delta for change in accounts receivable, the change in inventory, the change in accounts payable, the change in accruals. So that's going to be the different categories for my cash flow from operations. Net income, $48,000. Remember, that's not an actual cash flow, right? Because depreciation, there's no check written for depreciation. That's just an accounting fiction. So $30,000, and I add that back. So it's going to be positive. Then accounts receivable and inventory. I'm going to look at these right here. And compare them to that right there. Okay, I think it's easier for me to think about inventory first. Inventory went up, and it went up by 10900 Now, trust me on the math. You can do the calculations later or on your own or whatever, but um, the difference here is 10900 And my question is, is that positive cash flow or negative cash flow? Well, I have more stuff. I have more cars. I have more clothes. I have more parts. Whatever it is, I have an inventory. I have more of it. So the way I get more inventory is I buy it. It must have cost me money. Accounts receivable is on the same side of the balance sheet, so it acts the same way. Here the difference is $21,000, but it went down, so I know that's positive. The way you can think about that as well is I was owed $30,000 last year. This year I'm owed $9,000. I must have gotten paid $21,000. All right, now we can look at accounts payable and accruals. They're on the other side of the balance sheet, so their signs are going to be opposite. Uh, it's going to be done the opposite way that you do the accounts receivable and inventory. So for accounts payable, think opposite of accounts receivable, went from 49000 to 37000 $12,000. Is that a positive cash flow or a negative cash flow? Last year in 2012, I owed 49. This year in 2013, I owed 37. I must have paid money. That's a negative. Accruals. Accruals is money I owe to. It went from 16 down to 2. That's $14,000 difference. And I paid down what I owed, so that's a negative. So my overall cash flow from operations was 62,100. Make that a positive number. All right, now let's do cash flow from investing next. It doesn't matter the order I do it. Cash flow from investing. And here I'm going to look at net fixed assets. But I really need gross fixed assets. All right, so I'm not required, or the company's not required to list gross fixed assets. I only net fixed assets, but I need gross. But I don't really need the gross fixed assets. I need how they change because cash flow from investing, the part we're looking at, there are other parts, but the part we're looking at is buying plant, property, and equipment, which is fixed assets. So if you see plant, property, and equipment someplace, fixed assets someplace else, same thing. No difference. All right. So I know gross fixed assets minus accumulated depreciation is equal to net fixed assets. So in 2012, I know my net fixed assets for $285,000 and in 2013 I know my net fixed assets for $295,000. I don't know what accumulated depreciation was. Let's say zero. If that were true, 
gross fixed assets would be 285 and if accumulated depreciation was zero last year and I have $30,000 of depreciation this year that means accumulated depreciation was 30000 so gross fixed assets must have been 325000 right because 325 minus 30 is 295 so now I can look at the difference there the difference and gross fixed assets is $40,000. It went up $40,000. So I bought plant, property, or equipment. So if I bought it, the cash flow must have been negative. All right, so let's look at uh, cash flow from financing. Let me get, try to get a little bit of a better color here. Cash flow from financing. Well, here I'm going to look at the change in notes payable because this is how I get money to put into the money machine uh, notes payable change in long-term debt change in common stock but here I have common stock at par and capital surplus so common stock par these are the same thing review your accounting if you need to change in capital surplus and then I'm always going to have a negative for dividends. Dividends will always be negative. Okay, so let's look at accounts payable. We're from 6000 to 21000 so the difference there is 15000 Accounts payable, that's, I mean, not accounts payable, excuse me, notes payable. Notes payable is money I'm borrowing from a bank. Maybe this is listed somewhere as bank loans. If I borrow more money, I owed six grand last year, owed 21 grand this year, I borrowed money, that is a positive cash flow. All right now I need to look at these categories right here the long term debt and the common stock ones and same thought process here the change in long term debt is $6,000 went from 150 to 156 it goes up I borrowed money and that's a positive cash flow if it had gone down I would have paid down debt it would have been a negative cash flow the common stock at par went up 5000 so I've issued stock um, and capital surplus spent went up 1000 so that's positive. Now I need to subtract the dividends. Well, how do I figure out what the dividends were? Well, my net income is $48,000. And now I either take that $48,000 and put it into retained earnings. It's an ugly E, but you, you know what it is. Or I pay it out as dividends. That's the rule you need to know. I have net income. I either keep it as retained, keep retained, keep or retained earnings, or I pay it out as a dividend. So my retained earnings last year were sixty-five thousand two hundred. This year they're eighty thousand dollars. I must have kept fourteen thousand eight hundred. Right? If I kept fourteen thousand eight hundred, I must have paid out thirty-three thousand two hundred. And so this is 33,200. So my cash flow from financing is my $6,200. So now I add this number, this number, and this number. And guess what? They add to that. So I've done this correctly. And that's it.